welcome Con Corner. Um, Mouse Toes has challenged us to come up with a pie crust recipe to go along with her delicious chicken pot pie. Chicken pot pie is one of our favorite dishes. So um, since, she, since she's invited us to uh, uh, to put to get to, to put a pie crust recipe up and uh, uh, put it up to test with her recipe, um, uh, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to make uh, make a flaky pie crust. Uh, my basic recipe is um, is an old one out of an old Farm Journal cookbook, so it's a uh, it's pretty old. I make a I always run short on pie crust. The usual recipes that I, for uh, 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 for pie crust um, for double crust pie are never enough to me to be able to really do a full full double crust. So um, this recipe uses three cups of flour. And I use lard in mine. I've stopped using shortening because I can't find any shortening that doesn't have a, doesn't have soy oil in it. And I try to avoid using any soy. Soy it's a fermented old original soy soy like a um, like soy sauce is not a not a bad thing. But the soy that's used in oils and and uh, all the different uh, Proteins and, and, and texture protein and things that are, um, they, they just permeate all of our food, so I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm using, using lard here. We're going to use a, a cup full of lard. If you're using, uh, if you're using butter instead, um, you might need a little bit more butter. You might need another, uh, another quarter cup of butter. Also use, use only real uh, fats, use only real butter. Uh, not margarine, it has water in it. Don't use light butter. Light butter has water in it. Um, the, the thing is, is there is, <laughs> the perfect pie crust recipe is kind of like a holy grail. Everybody has, a, oops, I better put my salt in first. Um, salt, uh, we use um, kosher salt for our regular, just day-to-day -day salting, and for seasoning, things that you're going to taste, it's good. But it measures differently than, than uh, the, the salt that's, that's in, uh, in our, our little salt boxes, the traditional kind. So uh, when I'm baking, I try to use this kind of salt because it does measure better. We'd have less salt if we were using, uh, we're using kosher salt. Okay, that's one and a half. There we go. It's cold here today. Um, very cold. There are recipes out there that use oil too, um, although I have not, not ever used them. Our, in our family, we always used to yeah, use these. I have to tell you, I am not the, the pie maker in, in the family. Actually, that's my sister. Um, her pie crusts are, are legendary, and uh, and hers is, um, and, and she makes a lot more pies than I do. I'm going to use my, find it, there it is. Um, if you don't have uh, one of these little, one of these little gadgets, uh, I'll tell you they're, uh, they're, they're worth their weight in gold. You can use a fork uh, instead of a pastry blender, but it's, you know, it's one of those things that uh, you, you find a lot of times, uh, in a junk box, you know, for a dime, uh, and uh, they they really make a difference in being able to cut in your your flour, and your your uh, fat into the flour, and keep it in place. Paul says that the secret to good pastry is to not handle it any more than necessary, and to keep everything cold that you're using. So 
So um, most of the techniques that I'm using are things that uh, uh, follow Paul's advice. He said, you know, his his mother was a bread baker when he was growing up, and he he said for the longest time. <laughs> when I asked him about this today, I said, all right, what advice do you want me to give? He said, he said the reason I know how to make good pie crust is because I made such bad pie crust for so long. <laughs> and uh, and when he finally figured out that it's it's exactly the opposite of a yeast dough, um, <laughs> where you're where you know you're, you're handling it and beating it and. Uh, uh, that, that, that once he figured that out, he was finally able to make good, good pie crust and great biscuits. Oh man, his biscuits are his biscuits are to die for. One of these days, we'll get him to uh, get him to make biscuits for for us for y'all. A little bit of vinegar. Um, the, the, the acid has a chemical reaction um, in, in the fats and kind of in, or in the flour and kind of helps keep the gluten from developing. Um, so I'm going to use the the uh, a tablespoon of vinegar as a, as part of my liquid here. Okay, I'm going to start by adding three, four, five tablespoons of water. Get my pastry cutter back here. secrets, like I said, I can't handle it too much, so I'm just going to kind of fluff it around there with my fork now. I think I'm going to add one more tablespoon of ice water. Um, personally, I think milk makes a softer crust too, um, so um, it's like I talked about with making the, my batters. You know, if I want a real crispy batter, um, I'll use a, use a water or beer makes a crispy batter, but, uh, but, but not milk. But milk is good for a nice soft batter. So, okay, might need a little bit more. The secret is to kind of, I'm not going to get this fully wet and fully, um, um, okay, here's about about two more full tablespoons. And, and the amount of liquid that you're going to use is going to differ. Um, depending on how much, uh, the, you know, how much moisture there is in your flour from day to day. If the humidity is high, your flour is going to have uh, moisture in it. Okay, you know. tablespoon at a time like that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is gather it up and uh, see how it kind of stays together even though it's still real, real dry feeling on the outside. It's kind of staying together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gather it up. Now normally you'd use, uh, use plastic wrap, but I'm out of plastic wrap. And I've been trying to figure it to, to start kind of using the, the wax paper. Um, you know, it's you know, biodegradable and all of that kind of thing. I don't worry too much about that, but uh, it's just old fashioned and uh, it's kind of a, kind of makes me feel good to use some of these little old fashioned methods of doing things. All right, now I'm gonna gather it up. Squeeze it together. Okay. And now I'm going to put it in the refrigerator 
and get it wrapped up like that. And what's going to happen is the, all that liquid is just going to kind of disperse itself equally all through the through the pie, through the pie crust. And so at this stage, if you wanted to make it ahead, you could make it at this stage and you could let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. Um, but I'm going to only let it sit for an hour today. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, welcome back. It's been, it's been a couple of hours. I've been doing some other things, and I got my uh, I got my um, a filling made. Um, you'll want to go over to uh, uh, to Mouse Toes blog to I mean to Mouse Toes uh, channel to see how to make the filling. All right, now I'm going to gather this up. Let me just pour all of this out here. Make a big old mess. And set that aside in case I need that to wrap this up in. Some of this up in. Right. Now what I'm gonna do is just kinda kinda pat it. Like I said, we're gonna treat this we're gonna treat this almost like biscuit dough. Biscuit dough I would just uh, bring together. And uh, <clears throat> so that's kind of what I'm going to do here. You can also use a pastry cloth. Um, I, I'm, I'm fortunate with this this little island um, has a has a, a wooden workspace, and so I've worked with it enough, and I've oiled it enough that it's got it's very smooth, and it, and it works real well for this kind of thing. But if you don't have a, a good uh, breadboard to work on, um, a, a one of those old linen towels. Or, or any kind of a, a, of a smooth uh, cotton or linen towel, smooth woven, that you can impregnate with flour, you can roll onto it, and uh, it, it's very beneficial in helping you get it, get it up. And let's see if this has got enough in it. Maybe a little bit crumbly. Yeah, this looks like I'm gonna have to do a little bit more with it here. All right, so I'm gonna take this one. There's that one. I'll take this one. I normally make um, when I make when I make uh, chicken pot pie. Since it's just the two of us now, I make individual ones. And um, I have these little these little dishes that I that I put them in, and they're oven proof. And uh, so I can. That's just enough for a serving for us. And I usually make four, and that way. You know, if Paul wants to that night, he can have them, and then there's one left over. If not, there's a there's a couple of them left over. And uh, okay, now this I'm gonna need a little bit more water. Just a just a little dab kind of bring it together. Now see what happened is I didn't get enough water in it, but the the good thing is is it's still salvageable. I uh there we go. That's about another tablespoon and a half or so. And it's still uh st see I can still add my add my water in now. Now this this is a good way to to see the difference. All right, and what it, what's left there, I'm just going to use as a um, instead of flour on my board, I'm just going to kind of use that that crumbly there uh, to. Uh, there we go. To roll out to flatten it with my hands. All right, now. Exactly why they make those uh, those marble rolling pins is for rolling out things like uh, pastry or um, or if you're making croissants. Oh, that's way beyond me. I I would never attempt that. All right. Now then, 
That's all rolled out. You never want to wash your rolling pin either. You'll, uh, once I'm done with it, I'll, uh, I'll take a clean towel, clean dry towel, and I'll just wipe, rub it off. So I'm only, I'm only ever going to use it for, for pastries. I'm not going to ever get it around meats or anything like that. All right, now then, now I'm going to use my little bench scraper here and bring it up. to show you and then I'll do the other one a little bit lighter when I'm not on camera. I try to keep these things fairly short. Paul said that, that the, the site says that the most ones that get the most look, looked at are, are always going to be you know 20 minutes or less so that's what I'm trying to try not to get them too long. This one's a little bit crumbly. I said this is not something that I usually usually do. Um, I uh, there's a, the biggest secret to pie crust. <laughs> it really is to make it every day or every once a week until you kind of get a handle on it. And uh, the problem that I have, I make a pretty good pie crust, but I can't make mine look pretty. I can't get the the edge is nice and um, get it nice and round. I don't know, I don't know what I do wrong, but uh, but I just don't ever succeed at that. So that's uh, that's the thing that I need help with is how to how to get it looking looking pretty. This one's this one's a little bit crumbly. going to dock this. I'm going to use my fingers to kind of poke it or poke it through. But you know, with a with pizza crust, you poke holes in it. And when you're when you're baking, uh, when you're when you're pre-baking an empty crust, you poke holes in it. But um, this one, I'm going to fill before I bake it. All right. Where's my? Here's my other one. Okay. All right. Feeling made up. I had some turkey. Had some turkey in the freezer uh, from when we made the gumbo. I had a, a nice chunk of uh, turkey breast, and uh, so I used that. There's my peas and carrots. Chick on it that you used to want. The extra flour that I just put on there will help uh, help thicken this. See now you 
get to see what I can't do. I can't make a pretty pie crust. It tastes good, but it's uh, probably a uh, mouse toast pie crust is a lot prettier than this one's going to be. All right, now I'll make this other one. Get back in there, back in there. Another fun thing to do with, uh, uh, with chicken pot pies is if you can get those um, those milk glass hen on nests, bake the uh, bake the pie, bake the bottom part, in the chicken pot pie in the bottom part um, with with a little cutout like that on the t on the top, and then uh, when you put them on the table, put those lids on them, and and so at each plate you've got that hen on nest sitting there. All right, and that's uh, so that's. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Let me get these baked and then I'll then I'll show you what that looks like. All right. Okay, here we are. We're back. They finished baking. I baked them for uh, uh, 40 minutes at uh, 400 degrees, and uh, they came out looking really good. Um, as you can tell, my my crust isn't isn't very pretty, but the little turkey looks cute, and uh, <laughs> I try to. To maximize my um, uh, the the asset and uh, and and minimize the the oddities there. <laughs> um, so the moral here is even if something is not not something that you normally do, if you have a challenge, go for it and then you know be pleased that you were willing to try. Uh, thanks, Mouse Toes, for the uh, for the opportunity to to do this. All right.